And we are live. My name is Martin Hoxie. That's Kara. That's Charles. That's Alice. Hey. And we are totally on script. Yeah. So, yeah. Too much energy. <laughs> um, we're 20 think, times four. <laughs> I think we're all still slightly delirious from Google Cloud Nights last I week. I am um, so delirious that my head's not even here. <laughs> you left your head in Vegas. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it is. I did. I left my head in Vegas. <laughs> I'm going to turn off. You guys can just see my green screen because I want to wear the hat. I, love the hat. Wow. I had to go around and get like a lot of um, things scanned on my phone to get this hat. So. <laughs> wow. Things you have to do for swag these days. I know. Amazing. I know they make you <laughs> take a test for it now. Well, I went at the end easy. of the conference, yeah. so the vendors were just like, "Just scan it and go." <laughs> I'm like, do you want to scan my badge? Like, no. There's a little secret in in the, in the booth world. If you don't give it away, you have to bring it home. That's right. If you go around, socks were so popular. Before, there was no socks left by the time that I went around. Yeah, so that's how you get it. That's how you get it. So overall, though, what did you guys think of the show? What did you? I mean, big. What did you guys think? Given I'm from the UK, the the number of people at the event is larger than the town I live in. I agree. <laughs> I was gonna say I've been uh, to your town, Martin. It's not that big. <laughs> no, there's thirty thousand uh, people at the next conference. It's huge. Yeah, yeah no, it is. And, um, uh, and if you've never been to Vegas before, and Martin, that was your first time, right? That can be real. Um, can, yeah, um, it's yeah. Um, yeah. Well, Martin, or yeah, Charles screwed me up. Charles is this way on the Vegas thing because he told me I should put my money on green. And I told me he was a fool, and it came up green. I don't, I don't give any more advice, but the other person, Allison. Hey, Allison. Um, he came back money positive because she listens. Really? But anyway. <laughs> Carol, what do you think? There you go. Me? Yeah. Oh, man. Uh, I thought it was great. I was so excited to meet a lot of people. There was a lot of people. <laughs> You know, it was really cool to see a lot of the announcements. I did get a pair of socks, so sorry, Alice. Uh, I think I beat you to it. <laughs> I did get some Google Cloud Innovator socks at the Innovator Breakfast, so okay. I'm not totally sockless. Great. So just to prove that we're not one person using AI to actually host the show, there's a picture of us, right, where we're all together. <laughs> For the very first time, first time. As, a, yeah. as a cast, we've been together before, but the first time as a cast, you can see us out by our booth. You can see Martin, Karen, and I coming off stage at the end. I actually got to walk past Alice's session while in action and great, get a great picture of her modifying the format. For, for, sorry, formula. Can't wait to see a quick redo here in a second. Yeah. Then Kara's on stage blasting it to over 350 people showing you how you get started. So the purpose of our show today, which I'm gonna blast the title up, is to kind of take the AE, the totally unscripted version of this, where we can go off script, of course, talk a little longer, <laughs> uh, some things we couldn't. One of the things that bothered us getting on stage, Martin, Karen, and I, was they only gave us 45 minutes and they gave us a really cool topic. It's like, it was a really cool topic. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to skip our slides and go deeper in the content. Martin had a shoehorn into three minutes, well, <laughs> five, uh, into seven, but Martin's actually going to show the demo. Okay. Then. But Alice, your talk, first of all, when I walked past your talk, and I don't know how I missed it from the beginning, but I got to it in the middle, and you made the absolute best case for automating. One I did. Room. I have it on video. I shared it with you. Okay. When you run out of what things work out of the box, you talked about how do you actually script it yourself. Yeah. Um, that said, and by the way, just folks tuning in, be prepared to fast forward or go along with us because we may go a little past our time today. But Alex, why don't you kick us off? Give us the foundation of what are some of the things you can do to get really grounded in bringing AI into workspace. 
is, is that me doing my slide? Okay, it is me doing my slide. <laughs> right, right. So my topic Hold on, hold on. Do, hold on. do it. Do yeah. it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> do it. I I'm gonna do it for that because we're going to let's about... do it. I got it. Ta -da. No, let's do it. I have that. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know the joke, I kind of go this little out of order is that originally when I put in my session, it was Duet AI for Google Workspace. And then right before we go to next, they've changed it to Gemini, but honestly, no one was really quite sure. So I was chatting with the other champions uh, and uh, Google Cloud champions, and they're like, I don't know. And it was it was a big debate. So I left, I left my presentation the way I had it. Duet your data. So we're going to unleash AI insights in 15 minutes. I'm Alice Keeler, the queen of spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are the greatest invention ever, but doing a uh, manual data entry is not. That pretty much sucks. So ta-da, we can use Duet. No, 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 back that up. Um, ta-da, we're going to use Gemini. <laughs> and I personally, I love Gemini. And I cheat a little bit because I have the beta version. So I have advanced features that you're going to have to pay for. Um, but I say completely worth it. I can't live without it. So let's do it. Thanks, guys. So if you have uh, Workspace Labs, you can get Gemini in your sidebar. And you can say cool things like summarize my email and give me all of my emails that have a receipt, invoice, or bank statement. And then here's the mic drop. Uh, can you put that on a table for me? I right, put this into a spreadsheet. So you can see it's actually reading my email and it's telling me how much my bills are. And so I don't have to do that manual data entry, which is huge because that makes my data more accurate. And I, while I'm waiting for it to put it in a spreadsheet, I'm drinking coffee or something. <laughs> <laughs> so I just like, there's just the sidebar and then you can go to gemini.google.com to actually get a little bit more powerful because right now i think they're not the same version i just love this little graphic it's like hey i'm looking at your emails i'm looking at your google drive and it's able to summarize it and you can see maybe on there that it has this export to, to google sheets button is that has to be easily the best invention of all times. Of course, I want it in a spreadsheet. And now that I have it in a spreadsheet, what am I going to do with it? Now, we're not going to talk about why I'm working on farm. In fact, I'm on a farm right now. That's why I have my green screen behind me. I'm in a farm office. So I'm working on a project uh, where they have a lot of data. There's 30,000 acres. And it's just so overwhelming to like look at all of these different elements that are on the farm, how many acres, how much you've sprayed it, who owns this piece of dirt. Uh, but I have Gemini sidebar, right? So because I have Workspace Labs, I have the Gemini icon right in the sidebar. And I cannot tell you, it took about 10 seconds before this moved from nice to have to must have. Like I cannot live without the Gemini sidebar. I now share all of my documents with my account that has this because I can't use my spreadsheets and things without it because I can ask Gemini what I want to know. Create me a formula. Now you guys, I'm really good with a, a spreadsheet, right? I can make my own formulas, but I can't make them as fast as Gemini can. So mm -hmm. it just really helps me, even if it's like a simple count A right there, right? Equals unique. I can ask for it faster in plain language than I can type it out and get my data ranges. And because it's reading and looking at my data, it actually knows which columns I want without me having to be super explicit. So it's really cool. But then also it's a whole conversation, right? So it knows I'm talking about corn. It knows that I want a formula on this. And so then I can keep asking it without giving it the back information that I can design my data info a lot faster a lot faster uh it's really cool so uh you're able to just insert in formulas right in maybe you want to adjust them a little bit but it's really quick and easy to use so now that i have used duet no i didn't i used gemini to extract data out of my google drive or out of my email and i have this spreadsheet and i've gotten some insights about my data in the sidebar Let's go ahead and build a dashboard with Gemini, <laughs> of course. <laughs> so 
Now, what we're going to want to do to build a dashboard is you usually want to have a different sheet, right? So I have my first sheet is now dashboard, and I have my data on this crop data tab. And what I noticed is that I'm still able to query Gemini, and it knows that I'm looking for information about that crop data. So I'm able to insert in those formulas on my dashboard to build this dashboard very quick and easy. There is a small caveat that it, it doesn't yet. I mean, if I could describe Gemini in one word, it's the word yet. It's just, just give it a hot second. Like, does it tomorrow it will? It's, it's just constantly getting better. So right now it doesn't do cell referencing to another sheet. So I do have to do that part manually, but eh, that's easy to fix because I got this equal sum filter and I was able to do that a lot faster. So I get a list of what I wanna visualize and then the data that I wanna get for that. And of course I can use the charts and graphs to build this data dashboard. And my new favorite thing that I've been using these days is slicers. Those are really awesome. So I can throw those into my dashboard and all that's really, really cool. But you can step it up with app script. So, I'm able to get those charts, but what if, what if I have a 30 acre farm? What if my data doesn't look awesome in a pie chart? What if I have something really special and unique? You all have a farm. You don't even know it. Maybe it's not a literal farm, but you are farmers of data and you have a special way and unique way that you want to merge them together. And the, what's really cool about Google Workspace is that AppScript lets spreadsheets and slides, actually all the products work together. So what I'm doing right now is the farmer is out in the farm collecting data on a Google form. I get those into Google Sheets and then I'm pushing that into Google Slides all using Google AppScript so that I can make this really cool map. Now you're thinking, Alice, how cool for you. I know that you are a Google developer expert for Google Workspace, and that means you're really awesome at coding app script, and you know what I am. But I actually don't code app script anymore. I don't code app script anymore because I just use Gemini. So you wait, are all wait, now, wait. what? Wait, 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 wait. This is a developer show. Are you telling me, hold that thought, are yeah. there these cases where you would also like to experiment with functionality? Wait. That's the show, by the way. But we have extended our audience, Charles, because now literally everybody is a developer. Oh, I see what you just yeah. oh, did. And farmers. I, and farmers. And farmers. So I, I made all of these things where I want to, you know, I want to make the maps. I'm going to send it to Google Slides. I'm going to create a Google Slides. I'm gonna shade the county lines. I'm gonna place the lines for the different territories and roads. I'm gonna put down the corners because, now here's something I learned from working on a farm. When you get a, when you water it, it waters in a circle. So you plant different things on the corners. So I have to put down the corners because we're putting weed on the corners, but corn in the center. So I gotta put those on there, some special shapes. And then we obviously water stuff. So there's some wells that I wanna put on there. So I just, Put each of these circumstances i'm like i have some wells how am i going to put this on my on my map and so it generated a good chunk of this code for me so i was literally able to generate this map at least at a basic level in one day in one day you guys there's over a thousand little bits on there yeah it's taken me a few more days to refine it but i can just add buttons to it you don't even need to have somebody look at the code i use google drawings so i go to insert i say insert a drawing I create this button and then you can assign the app script to the button. So your whole data dashboard now is super specialized with this code that you didn't even code or that you modified. Uh, but mostly I just do a good job of describing what I want to Gemini. And then it's gonna send those visuals, the data from the spreadsheet over to Google Slides and I have that really unique map that matches the data in real time. But what's cool about this also is it's Google Slides, right? So it's easy to share. It's easy to display. I can put it up on a TV or I can print it out. Um, so here you can see that I put down the background. I push one button, it puts down the shading in the background. I push another button, it puts down the corners. I push another button, it puts down all the places that I plant some corn. All right, cool. But what if I change what I'm planting? So when I came in here, we were making this map by painting it with the paint can which is, it takes a long time. And now what I literally do is I just highlight my column, my column with the 
corn, plant, uh, wheat, milo, whatever. And I just pick, okay, I'm going to plant everything to milo. Don't ask what that is. It's just purple. And then I push one button and ta-da, my whole map is now updated based on the data in my spreadsheet. So the magic sauce, I hope that I've convinced you that the answer to all of life's problems is not a spreadsheet, but rather Gemini using dashboards and app script. <laughs> That's it. That's all I got. <laughs> <And breathe. laughs> amazing. amazing. Isn't that amazing? So first of all, obviously, you know, you've always brought spreadsheets in the past. What I mean, it's up to your game in so many ways. So many ways. I mean, how would what would you say exponentially, you know, five times faster? Like what do you feel like you're you're gaining from actually you know combining this? Um it's it's way more than five times faster. I mean, even just like I have where um they go out and they say they're gonna plant the west half of field 32. Well, that actually is like five different corners of dirt. And I need to separate all those out and get seven pieces of information per section of dirt. And I need them to be in separate columns. So it comes in from Google Forms into a row. And I need to recognize that this piece of dirt is a group of pieces of dirt to put, insert five rows, separate it out with a split and transpose uh, to get the other pieces of dirt listed out and then get the uh, the information and all of the columns to be some of it's exactly the same and some of it's specific to that piece of dirt. I would if I were to code that myself, it'd probably take me a couple of days because that was pretty complicated that those set of steps and really unique. Like who needs to do this? Me. <laughs> no one else needs to do that. And it probably took me about the time it takes to go to the bathroom to make that work. So I just said, oh, I think I can do that. And uh, farmer left, he comes back. I'm like, it's working. I got it. it I, it's, it's just exponentially faster. Do you have any prompt tips to actually yes. find it? Like, how do you, first of all. Thank you. Yeah. This is really, really important. Uh, if you ask Gemini to give you some code, it will give you some lovely Python, which I don't know. <laughs> so it's very important that you say, in the current spreadsheet that I am using, in the current slides that I'm using, very important because otherwise it'll generate a new spreadsheet or a new slides and it just keeps making them and you keep pushing run. You're like, it's broken. And now you have 50 slides in your um, Google Drive. And then you want to say using Google Apps Script. So in the current spreadsheet, using Google Apps Script, I want to do these things. And when I started making this presentation, this wouldn't work, but it works now is I can take the link to the specific spreadsheet, drop that in there and say, summarize the data from this spreadsheet. Here's what I want to do with this data. And I say it in real language. It can read the tabs for me and it can actually do a lot without um, me having to actually be in the spreadsheet itself that it'll give me the code. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just going to do a, sh a shout out to Jesse for a second who, who tuned in. And I'm sorry I put that on you. Um, <laughs> Jesse did this really great biopsy yesterday of the importance of prompts. And you showed a prompt evolve when he continually made the prompt better by asking the right questions. And you probably heard right. at the event last week where, you know, our data science has already said like 27 words make up a good prompt. And so getting yeah. a prompt right, I'll get to that in a second more, getting a prompt right is, is super huge, but it's an evolution as well too. Uh, and knowing how to do it. So Martin just held something up and I'll, and I'll put up the slide for you. Uh, sorry again, Alice, that it covers yep. you. Um, Gemini for work, I've got Google Workspace prompt guide. If you check it out on that link, it's actually a 45-ish page book that really helps you understand space environment. That also is not just using Gemini on the panel, but also will help you when you're actually doing some coded solutions like we're gonna talk about in a second. So uh, super neat things. Alice, anything else specific that, that you think well, you know, and it doesn't hurt to know a little bit, right? You know, I, if you know enough to be mm -hmm. dangerous, um, it's because the more that you can explain to it, like I want it in a loop or I, I create me an array that does this, it, I, I'm going to get better outputs. Um, but mm -hmm. just being really specific about what you want and referencing what mm -hmm. you want, but in, definitely tell it what you want it to code in. <laughs> yeah. I, I think as well, I find knowing where to ask it and also... So as in um, Google for Workspace has the Gemini integration 
and then you have gemini.google.com <laughs> and knowing which one to go to it can save you a bit of time for yeah. app script stuff i go good. to gemini.google.com but the other i think real challenge oh is, the sidebar will not do app script just so yeah you know. it won't the the rate of pace in terms of change is so fast that yes yet something yeah. you thought wasn't possible one day is then possible when, the next day when i started asking prompts of slide app stuff a few months ago it's like it's a slide up and, and, now, yeah. and, now, and now it's actually it's better one thing i will say and i do this a lot what well, made code, this map for me when i'm doing code snippets and again alice to your point knowing a little so for example when i say i'm asking about arrays I say in JavaScript, not JavaScript. Yeah. Because there's just the, the, the LLMs have a larger corpus to go through for JavaScript, obviously, right. and AppScript. And so if I know it's generica enough to be, you know, ECMA, you know, JavaScript, then yeah. I'll ask it there. If it's specific to the spreadsheet or to something, I'll, I'll rephrase the question. Yeah, that's a really good point. I do the same, especially for things like regex, which you'd think are <laughs> evil. Gemini no does an amazing job at regex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Are we ready to turn the page? I just would like to say that you guys had the best session at Next. It was so good. You were obviously had practiced a lot, but your content and everything was amazing. So I'm super excited to see it again. Aww, awesome. awesome. So we hope we hope it's as good. I don't quite know if we can bring that energy, but we'll give it a shot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the hard was, to follow. That, that was delicious. That was delicious. And that's because you're a farmer now. Um <laughs> but real quick, uh Kara, take us in. Take us into this. Yeah. So we are skipping slides, right? We're just jumping We're right We're not in. even doing slides unless you tell me to go through them. Perfect. Okay. <laughs> Let's go into our first farm field. <laughs> trying to stick with this analogy. <laughs> and what we want to do today is just like dive deeper into the demos that we did show during our session. And you can watch the proper recording um, to see the slides and all the context around that. But uh, I would really like to talk about the demos specifically. And so here on this farm, we've got uh, <laughs> some data about customer reviews. And it's funny because this, this demo came from, you know, Charles and I having a, a casual conversation about like, oh, Gemini is so cool, like all the things you can build with it. And I wonder if we could do a custom function. And so we got off the phone and within 10 minutes, I pinged him and I said, I got it. It works. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And if, if you saw our live session, and again, I just flashed up uh, the URL. Yeah, I literally said I was blown away by what, she built, and then I looked at the code, and I was blown away by how little it took. <laughs> it was still amazing. I but tweeted I, that. But the amazing part of it was just, I think, draw jump. It's just, it, it was amazing. So let's let's break it down here. You want to you want to take us through it a little? I'll drive if you talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. So um, what we've done is we built a custom function that allows users to basically enter their prompts into a spreadsheet about the data that they are already in the context of. And this custom function here that Charles is pulling up is called equals Gemini. You can name it anything you want. And we've given it just two parameters. One is the data range, and we're just gonna select this uh, sample piece of data for customer reviews, which uh, he's working on a absolute reference for that because uh, he's far more polished than I am with these things. <laughs> And, and this is, you know, the first piece of data that you give it goes into the prompt. And then the second parameter is just going to be any question that you want to ask it. And this is great to let your users, you know, prompt Gemini, but you can also add some front loading or even have a third parameter um, that you that, that you hard code and say, okay, it needs to be in this format, it needs to be in this context, don't use these brand terms, whatever you need to do with your data. Um, you can give people the free range of, of adding in a prompt, but also add some stuff that maybe you wouldn't want to have to repeat every time. Um, and as you can see, it, it, it's super fast. It works really well. All the responses are just using the data range that Charles gave it. And you can ask things like, 
have we gotten any ne negative feedback? And it'll say, yeah, and here's what it was. <laughs> I have to say, um, you, you showed me this. And then the following day, we were doing a, an event review and we had Google Forum survey data. And I looked like a total superhero. I basically ripped <laughs> off your work. <laughs> Fabulous. I love it. <laughs> That's what it's here for, right? And, you know, to the point of that, and I think uh, I agree with you, Kara, that involving the user in the spreadsheet to use their own knowledge, their own language, and involve them in the, the prompting process. You know, out of the box, Gemini is amazing. Mm -hmm. right? We know that. We've seen that already. It's very impressive. But this allows you to kind of couple that, protect the user a little bit from having to think about it. It's like in the case here, you know, we just did a simple drop down where we took the same prompts and, you know, we can run it here and then I can just come up here and go Gemini. And notice again, real easy. And again, if folks have done this or by the way, the other great thing is you can use defined range names, which is I prefer to do, but typing up here on this keyboard, I'm not as nice, but anyway, when you do this. And so now you again, just like you saw what Alice talked about, you can turn this into a mini little application and the user doesn't have to think you can pre-prompt them or you can let them again go there and just put their own prompts in yeah and to alice's point about the importance of prompting you'll see in row seven here where it's asking for a uh formula yeah. the first time i entered that prompt it was very short i just asked for the formula and then it came back and it had some extra formatting and so you know, when you're using Gemini for workspace, um, the, the front end UI takes care of a lot of that. But when you're using the API, you want to mm -hmm. be conscious of the extra context you need to give Gemini to get the right output that you're looking for. So we had to give it some clues on, you know, the sheet name has to be in quotes, don't include backticks, mm -hmm. all these things that we started seeing that we then needed to iterate on to get the output that we needed. Yeah, absolutely. So what's the bad news, Kara? What, what did we find that kind of we want to avoid people going away from which anything I mean processing's pretty fast. I know one that stuck out with me are things like this. We noticed and again, we're just passing in a range of data. If you notice one, two, five stars, cool. Uh oh. There's three five stars. Is there three? Yes. <laughs> but I run it. And sometimes it said two, and sometimes it said four. Now again. Notice in the prompt, all we're doing is handing in what the user typed and the range. These models are not being trained. These are you know, the, the, the publicly available models. Uh, we're not adding anything to it or, or doing it. So if you're building these solutions, first of all, LLMs are large language models. They're not math models. That's why you use your spreadsheet. Math so be careful what you do and, and, and you know especially alice in the case that you work with a lot of end users that are politely saying less technically savvy you want to make sure they're set up for success and, and right you kind of get that so i don't think we want to lead the witnesses and say boil everything here and, and carry your point was awesome we can actually teach them to fish versus giving them a bad fish and so mm -hmm. math is something that i found leave it in the spreadsheet don't uh don't try to uh you know switch right. it up. Agreed. Do I miss anything, Karen? Um, I don't think so. I why don't we? Yeah, let's jump into the code because I really do want people to see how easy it was to create this custom function. As you can see, it's it's just one one proper line of <laughs> the prompt with you know two arguments. Um, so yeah, let's hop into Gemini. And here I want to show the call that we're actually making to, to uh, the Gemini model. And we've got all of these uh, you know, properties that we need to add. Most importantly, it's just the prompt. So the contents of what we're sending it are the prompt, which includes our data range and whatever the user puts into the cell. Mm -hmm. Then we've got some configurations we've made here. There are some defaults that you can use, but you have full control over the temperature your max output tokens if you don't want the response to be too long. Um, you also, it's more efficient to be careful about how much you're asking for and, and providing the model. And then some safety settings. We are blocking none because we're just, you know, cowboys. But if you 
because that you want to make sure it doesn't cross any lines, you can put your safety settings higher or lower. Corey. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, you know, pull Alice into this. I mean, safer school, right? You want to make sure. Again, this is not a required setting, but a best case is, you know, I guess, you know, K through 12, you know, keep it light, right? So yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, and then you know we're just we're converting the payload into uh, JSON, and then just parsing that to uh, to get what we need from the response. Um, oh, you know what? Important here, API key. We're accessing that from our properties to not expose it. Well, <laughs> of course we expose it. That's fine, I guess. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one later. <laughs> I, I think at this point it's probably worth. I think, all. I think I think at this point it's probably it's probably not a surprise. It's Google. Why have one way of doing something when you can have two? Yeah. So, <laughs> and I found this initially quite confusing. Um, so you can go to Google AI Studio. This is where you can generate. Right these keys um, and use Gemini. Um, mm -hmm. Google AI Studio is really designed for testing, prototyping, you know, kicking the tires. You've got a nice interface that you can try prompts before you get the code. And then Vertex AI in Google Cloud also has G the Gemini API, and we'll talk more about that later. But that's where you can do stuff more securely. Your your It's your data, but mm -hmm. when you're doing stuff on Google AI Studio, you keep in mind that that data is has its different privacy policies. So yeah, that's a great point. That's a great point. And you know, the other thing which is interesting is here is, you know, first of all, we're going to show you a series of demos. None of them were using custom models in the back. You're right. There's different times when you're going to want to be able to call different ones. In fact, Karen, you have a great explanation here. Why did we do it this way and not the other way? Yeah, so here we're using the generative language API, which is not Vertex. This is directly calling Gemini. And the difference is that it doesn't require the uh, OAuth scope that, that would trigger user authorization. And custom functions don't support user authorization. Mm -hmm. It should be you know, very lightweight. You don't want to have to have them authorize anything. And so we went with this one to keep within the bounds of a custom function. Now there are workarounds you could use to use Vertex AI, but you would need to um, you know, add something like a custom menu or a custom button to trigger that off, cache it, and then uh, be able to use it in your custom function. But, to, but it's more of a workaround. If you just want the straightforward custom function, you can use generative language API with the API key. But to Martin's point, you want to make sure that you understand the implications of using that one versus Vertex and how the data is handled with each one, which is available in the documentation. Perfect. Now, hopefully this will be the last URL fetch we talk about and teaser, you must stay through to the end to find out why. But Kara, explain the rest of this, the call. Um, sorry. <laughs> oh, Kara, explain that. Oh, careful, let's try it again. Uh, we got the API key. Now, how are we going to call the model? Got the API key. We plug it into our URL fetch app call. It's just like any other REST API. So we're adding our API key, our options, and we get that payload back. And what we're returning is literally just the text of the response. Gemini is so good at, you know, especially if your prompt is good, your response is going to be good. So we're not even doing any post processing when we're returning the text here. It's just, we're grabbing that text from the payload and putting it right into it, which is, I mean, it's it's incredible how much power we're able to add to this custom function and not having to do much post-processing work at all. Yeah, absolutely. And again, you get a little bit of static there on somebody, but uh, the other thing is, you know, end of the day, these are just custom functions. They calc when they calc, you can force calc. Uh, you can wrap them around things. You can make compound prompts. You can build really great many solutions here. Uh, be aware, you saw they take a few seconds. Uh, these can actually incur cost uh, in certain cases, not all, you know, um, more advanced cases. So you want to make sure that you're you're using them appropriately. But the neat thing is, 
that was brilliant and that was brilliantly easy. Yeah, it's your point about timing out, just FYI on the 30 second timeout for custom functions. So if you run into that, that might be one something that's giving you an error. Absolutely. Uh, so to move on to the next one, and again, shout out to Nathan Gammy uh, from Kara's team, uh, tech writing team, who actually originally conjured this thing up. And the whole notion was, you know, what do you do in workspace when you're building solutions? One of the biggest use cases is bulk automation of something. We got a lot mm -hmm. of files, a lot of slides, a lot of emails, a lot of something. And so the whole notion is, what can I do here so I can bulk leverage AI versus a simple uh, call? And so what we wanted to do is actually show how you can use a editor add-on. And by the way, um, you know, there's many different ways that you can actually create these solutions. Anybody who's seasoned watching this knows that we've got custom functions, editor add-ons, workspace add-ons. We've got a bunch of others we'll show you, um, but there's a lot of different ways you could actually push these out. This is specifically an editor add-on for a couple of reasons. They're perfect. Thank you, Martin, for pulling that up there. I carried in a great document on actually explaining every single entry point into uh, kind of the user experience for workspace users uh, that you can build on. So check that out. It's a great checklist to kind of get you going. Some of the differences are that obviously this editor add-on, you pull up from the menu versus the side bottle pop out, pop out. And you also get HTML service, which gives you the ability to do things like make your own custom UI. So in this case, I can jump around and do things um, and make a richer experience. So we'll show you in a second. So how's this going to work? Let's go back to the demo. What it does is it allows you to simply put a smart chip for any one of your files over here. And then what I'm going to do, I didn't realize that moved, but that's OK. I'll do three files here just to make it a little faster. And then that's right. I think it's right. Uh, we're going to do a generic prompt. And the neat thing here, that prompt is actually buried in the code. Uh, but what Nathan did, which made it kind of cool, was he allows you to come out and I'm going to clipboard in a custom prompt. So it's going to run everything twice. It's going to take a little longer. So I'll kick that off now. I'll explain what's going to happen in a second. Uh, the neat thing here, he did here, he's creating a new page. He actually has the uh, a little nice graphic to let the user know. This is going to take a while. And while's relative, but why the editor add-on is so beneficial is you have a longer window than you'll get in the workspace add-on to do this. So that's one of the first reasons we're here. The second reason we're here in an editor add-on, while that keeps chugging along, is we could build actually a richer HTML-based UI. We wanted to involve the user in the process of actually tempering their expectations here. So if I want tighter summaries or more creative summaries. We put a slider in, because if you uh, are uh, pretty savvy, and by the way, it just came back, you can see, uh, you've noticed that a slider is not one of the options in uh, a workspace add-on. So here in an editor add-on, you can get it. Uh, the next thing is, when we built most of these, you know, Gemini was a 1.0, and the token window was smaller. Now, the great thing is with a you know, million, whatever, and however big it really gets, you can send the sky as the limit, but we wanted to, to limit it for two reasons. One, there's no need to build a prompt that's massive if you don't need a massive prompt. There's no reason to send an entire spreadsheet to a model if that doesn't make sense. So you as a developer can throttle that. Um, you want to make it more realistic. You may want to make it faster. And obviously, there's a cost when you're sending more content back and forth and so you can control that. So um, again, we just mimicked what Vertex AI looks like, and we use those settings. They also can do cool things like hover overs, which again, you can't do that as well. I could explain that better by reading that. Um, right inside of the panel. So first of all, let me kill the panel off and notice it came back. I didn't show you the documents, but take my word for it. But it's nice. You can see I got the prompts back in two different ways. Here's what we got directly from the built-in prompt. And here's the one that we did from the perspective of a tech writer. Tech writers think differently. We know that to be true, right, Kara? Uh, so you can see, <laughs> uh, you can see it's nice and it breaks it out and it puts it in a different way. So a great, a great simple way to automate things. So you can crawl the drive directly or put files in a spreadsheet, etc. Any comments, thoughts, anybody? For me, it's it's actually a, a reminder just how much engineering is going into Gemini for workspace. And in terms, you know, you're you're exposing now that some of the nuts and bolts that you can actually do and. For Gemini for workspace, you know, it's very much user focused. Um, 
So I think it, it's it's nice to see, you know, other ends of the spectrum because for engineers, I can see them just it's like, ah, don't give me the shiny UI, <laughs> give me a slider. <laughs> And, well, happy. And, and that's it. I mean, I've, I've been doing custom development for probably way too long. And everybody's like, I want a custom solution because my business is entirely different. You know, Newsflash, mm. most aren't that different, but yeah. there is a customization that people that want. And, you know, even Gemini, again, using, you know, generic models or not necessarily having access to, to all the different data scenarios, you can build that yourself right out of the contents. You can scrape mm. the contents right out of your you know, your doctor sheets, your slides, Gmail, whatever the case may be. So it really allows you to, again, why we build as, as workspace developers, leverage the greatness, the context of workspace, but leverage it your way or, you know, more specifically your, users and your customer. Yeah. Way. All right, let's move on to the next one. And yes. this, is, this is a fun one because first of all, close to home for folks like us that do a lot of content and preparation. And it also really kind of up levels the beauty of what AI can bring. So written by Steve Basil, who's my manager. Um, so um, please vote hi. Um, the yeah. new thing about this is it takes a different slant on the type of solutions you can build. So first of all, you probably are well aware, you can pull content out of workspace that is image-based, not just text-based, right? So in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at this slide as a whole, right? the images, the logos, the colors, and we're gonna ask for an evaluation of it to see how well it's laid out. Does it make good logical sense? Is it good? We're also gonna take the slide notes so we can take what the speaker is supposed to be saying and project back to the user, the person designing it, to give them enough information to know, you know what, according to Gemini, have you created a great slide? So let me pull it up here. This is a workspace add -on. So a little different, UI is not as fancy, does it mean to be? One of the things that Steve found out when he was building this, his first obvious answer was, well, if I want to do an evaluation, wouldn't it be great just to hit it at the same time and do the entire slide deck? And again, when Gemini 1.0 was not able to take as large a token count, it didn't make technical sense to try that. So he limited it to the one slide at a time. He also found out when he limited it to one slide at a time, it allowed him to simplify a prompt that would make the results more accurate. He set the whole slide deck. There's no knowing if Gemini might go a little confused and have to figure out what you said on this slide. What do you mean on that slide? How do I parse back to this slide? This says slide at a time. How do I get that answer? Somebody run this. I should have been running it instead of talking. Um, <laughs> yeah. I was like, why are we going to hit the button, man? <laughs> hit the button, hit the button. So again, it's taking that file. And I'm gonna, I'll share the code in a second, but it's going to take this file. And it's gonna take it as a picture, take the, the words out of the slides. And then what it did, and again, not a bad time response. And I'm on a wireless here for this unit because uh, I didn't have a dongle. But what I'm gonna do is scroll down the results. So what it do? Well, it brought back the main message of the slide is that app script can be used to create solutions, blah, blah, blah. It we'll also- We points on this. <laughs> we got the points on this. And not to be funny, we got better points on this than the last time we ran it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, which, which shows you the responses can vary. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. Um, but we also have four different settings on what we're asking it. And again, is the slide simple? Is it colorful? Does it have great structure, great use of graphics and icons? And my little joke, can we dance to it? But um, <laughs> or old enough to know that reference. Um, let me run this again for a different slide and just see what it comes back as since we have a little more time here. And well, you'll notice a couple that. things. First of all, you might notice better scores. Thank you. We actually have, the code is available for this one today. So Martin's gonna put up the code here in a second while it's running. There's also a great video of Steve talking about this. Um, and there is a blog post on it. Now you'll notice two things. One, our score is dropped. So we don't take that personally. But notice the format came back different. And this is a great lesson to learn. Again, it's, I won't say garbage in, garbage out. This is really useful, but you have to be explicit, implicit and explicit on what you're looking to, to get in the prompt in terms of not just the content, but how you expect it. Because your job as the developer is to parse it, obviously, in a way that's repeatable and predictable for the user. So this obviously needs to be tightened up a little bit. 
But let me skip to the prompt for a second and show you. This is probably one of the more elaborate prompts that we got. I'm going to go full screen on this prompt for a second here uh, and just show you what it is here in the slides. In fact, I could probably even skip the code, to be honest with you, because the prompt is the most exciting thing. So you'll notice it does that, that notion of tell me the tasks, give me uh, the, the definition of what I'm looking for, the context, um, uh, the rules, and then give me that output, the format. And so the task is very simple. I want constructive feedback on a presentation. Then you say, well, you start by giving me the main message of the slide. You saw at the very top, we got that main message. And then what Steve did here is he simply defined each one of those categories and he kind of went wild and said, Gemini, I'm going to give you these, but you actually come back with a score. He also did something really neat here. You'll notice he said, score at zero to 100 and explain the reasoning, but only, and, and suggest improvements only if the slide is a below C student or you know, C or below, which is super neat. So if the slide's not broken, don't bug the user, but let them know. And I think it's super neat in those use cases where Gemini literally picks that up without, again, not being trained, you know, no, no magic except for you know, this, this call to Vertex, and it works pretty neat. Uh, other things he did, again, used to define these things. Here's what a slide should be for color or simplicity for white space, obviously for imagery. And then probably the most important part at the bottom. The most important part at the bottom is, sorry, I was checking with the flash there, um, the format. You want the format to be really precise. And you're going to want to play and evolve your prompts, like both Alice and Jesse mentioned. And so in this case, he's like, respond with as markdowns with headers, bullets, and new lines. Because again, you want to get back something that's repeatable. And bluntly, you want to get something back where you do the least amount of work as a developer. Uh, and, and, and it shows up every time. So again, a really neat solution. I, I think, again, this is really tip of the iceberg stuff. We're still learning how a lot of it's working, but that's pretty crazy and amazing at the same time. Yeah, and if you, to, to your point about format, you could also include an example of what you want a response to look like. In, in a situation like this, you know it's gonna yeah. look a certain way. You could provide that in the prompt to help Gemini give you the correct format that you're looking for. Yeah. Anybody else, Martin? I see you guys all smiling. I feel like you're having back chat. I'm, I'm over here working. <laughs> well, I think we're going to talk. I'll talk forever. We're used I'm to not that. working. <laughs> She's got crops to plant. This was actually one of my favorites, and it was a crowd favorite. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The you know what was amazing? <laughs> you got applause after all of these, but this so, is the that's I, I, I will this. say. I will, I will admit, I, I built this one as somebody who wanted this. This scenario for me is not uncommon. I use docs for note taking and I'll go into a meeting and yeah, there's great tools and there's ways to actually sync that up better. And I know they exist, but imagine me being prepared. Uh, and so I, I'm littered with untitled documents. So I built this as my own self-defense mechanism. I've had more positive feedback and more give me this code for this that I ever, ever expected. And when the applause broke out, I was like, oh, 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 I'm not the only one. Thank goodness it's not just me. Thank goodness it's not just me. So let me show you what it does and we'll talk about it in a little second. So we wanted to uh, pivot here. One of the things we're doing is trying to show you each app in action. So we're, we're obviously over in Drive. And so when you create your Drive files and you don't name them, like we talked about, wouldn't it be nice to actually get some help with this? Now you know you can go into the doc separately. You can pop a doc open here and say, you know, what's this document about? I can show you the document. I can read the document. I can change the document. This one's about a dog named Spot. Not that interesting. Um, let's find a better one. This one is about, let's do a big one. This one is about, I'm going to click here. Okay, this one is, can you pass an entire Google Doc? Yeah, blah, blah, blah. And it's so long. Of course, I can click on this and I can make it come to the top and I can do that. But that just takes the first sentence. That's not helpful unless the first sentence is a perfect summary. So what we're going to do, I'm going to unname that, or I can leave that name, by the way. Um, let's go back, and I get this long document button. Let's go back and rename it better. And again, this is a live demo, so I shouldn't have renamed that. And it'll take a second here. But I'll refresh it. Let's just do it. Bingo, refresh. And you'll see now it's actually named. 
doesn't matter. It's not looking for that parameter. We pull it up and it's going to come up when I click on this. And again, notice, because it's an add-on, it needs to get the context in the add-on of the file to, to get the most minimal permissions, to get the context of what's in the file. We literally take the body of this document, send the entire body. We can obviously cap that at a certain token limit. In this case, we're sending the entire body back. It comes back with a summary and three really good names. And so what I can do is simply come down here and I can accept. Again, this is actually even better than the default one. I can take a different one and say, you know what? I'm using Gemini with AI, rename it right there. If I don't like any of those names, I built a little refresh button in and you can see how fast that works. Uh, there's other use cases which are neat. And I love this one. Say, for example, the document isn't worthy. There's the spot one again. Got one over here that's a little shorter, I believe. Let me make sure I get it right. And you see, it's actually pretty fast and pretty responsive. Mm -hmm. And these are good names coming back. But what if I find one? <laughs> that I'm like, you want this document? <laughs> and, and the answer is no, right? So I built this document. Mm -hmm. I didn't really do anything with it. I didn't plant a garden and nothing grew. Uh, sure. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> and so I can, without opening the file, reading the file, understanding the file, say, and she gone. And there she goes. Yeah, that's one of my favorite features. I have so many empty documents by accident. Yeah. Right. So it's a great site line. The great idea is gave me. There's so many favorite features. So many people ask for this. Do not be surprised. And this is not a hint, but do not be surprised when features like this and the custom function, mm -hmm. and even the rate of my slides end up in Gemini for works good, right? Mm -hmm. We're creating things, it's evolving. People are finding things they like. We're actually you know, trying to understand this better. You will see more and more use cases that when you build a solution, it may actually get <clears throat> replaced or superseded, um, <laughs> which, is a, which is a true thing, right? So don't not develop something, but definitely do follow the path of Gemini and see how it sticks out. So let's go on to another one and let's finish up the suite of products here um, that have nice editor add-ons. And this one's really super neat. So first of all, your inbox is your friend, is your enemy, is your friend, right? Yeah. So AI um, makes it easier to tame your inbox, but not necessarily has access to the tools, uh, at least originally, and it was hard. You could use things like Doc AI even a little while ago to go through and do things like, you know, um, classify all of your attachments using AI or automatically label all the content in your inbox, which is really super neat. Imagine being able to auto label something. This is a great use case we're gonna show you here where you can run a sentiment analysis. In other words, you can quickly take, say for example, we put some settings in here, take the week's last emails. And again, your mileage will vary about how much data you have or how much you wanna send back and then simply go out and tag, well, first review, but then tag any file that may have something that you need to have immediate attachment to. So in this case, you'll notice here that it just completed. I'm gonna refresh the screen just because sometimes they'll pop up super fast. And you'll notice, there you go. you'll notice that a label was already applied. And so again, if I have a tough morning, I come in, I gotta find out if any customers are unhappy. I come in here and visually, I can see that Mr. Jeffrey Clark is not as happy as I need him to be. So let's take a look. Uh, again, we took that pay little body and we went out and Mr. Clark said, uh, I wanna let you know, I'm a little frustrated. Your turnaround times are a little slow, blah, 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 blah. He did not hold back and uh, <laughs> okay, cool. So a couple of things, real first, when I scanned all of those mails. First of all, you have to manage the size of that. Second thing is to do that, if you're familiar with the add-on model, you get least privilege, you only get access to the selected email at a time. I literally mm -hmm. opened up this inbox. In other words, I went for the most open scope, which is really easy to do in, in your internal environment. If you're doing that in your external add-ons, that's super, super, super Top hard. Review. You're you're deep in the cost of review. And, and it's probably not optimal because as a developer, having access to some of the whole inbox sounds quaint. It's super dangerous and your, your lawyers aren't going to like it any better than ours. Anyway, so again, you could probably run that outside of an add-on, um, but 
I put it in the add-on just to show how cool it was. Back to the model. So, so Mr. Clark is not happy with this. So what we want to do is we stole all of our information in Jira. So notice, obviously, when I click on this email, I can read it, but also I get all the information back. I can see who Mr. Clark is. I can see his email address. I can see when he sent it. I can see he's got some challenges. What we did is we showed here how you could combine third-party data. And again, we're going to do some calls to the Jira API, look for the tickets that we have access to that match the description that we found in the metadata, Mr. Clark, and then go find every instance of every ticket that Mr. Clark has actually attributed to. We took those tickets and compiled a list of all those tickets. And by the way, that was pretty fast, both Jira and Gemini. And that's a live model. I did not actually make this up. And notice we had some fun by putting some graphics in there so you can quickly see, you know what? This ticket is fine. But if you look up here, uh, Mr. Clark and Kara, who's working on the deal, are not so happy because it hasn't been resolved. We get a little summary, and then we get the big summary that took about eight comments, put it together. Uh, and basically, it says, I didn't get to it, uh, and I'm the problem. So, oh, Charles. Stop me if you heard that one before. And then what you can do using that exact context and content is either craft a new email or add to the body of a response that you have existing. Here, let's craft a new one where it addresses this, pulls the content in, personalizes it, doesn't do everything there. For example, we didn't actually get the customer name um, or your name. And again, the notion there is make sure your users mm -hmm. review it because AI is good, but not perfect, especially in the court of law. And so you wanna make sure that you get that. But that to me is a neat way to tie in everything quickly. So your workflows of toggling and looking up and finding and help me type and all that, which things are you can do a lot with Gemini, um, you, we bring it right to the user. Pause. <clears throat> this reminds, actually reminds me of a, not a directly related conversation that next, but um, ended up talking to someone about workspace add-ons and the fact that in Gmail, you have, you have this real estate um, and it works on mobile as well. So you, you, you're coding once. So what you're showing here if you're out and about, um, you, you've got the exact same functionality. You're not having to code it twice. You, you've got that, that features on the hoof. And um, I think it's worth reminding people that that lives there. And I think another thing we were just chatting before the show as well, when you're using workspace add-ons, you, you are into a card service, but there is the new card service builder um, to you know just help you out with that stuff as well so Doesn't go it. and explore yeah, absolutely absolutely martin it's a great point i mean people always underestimate a gmail add-on i know mm. we'll to ship them a little, a little harder but who doesn't want help yeah. getting the mail sorted out and figured out anyway in terms of a use case as well <laughs> if you're mobile having a button that you can click that can quickly give you a summary of something yeah for you to decide what to do next and then another button to draft something for you to review yeah just, you know productivity just yeah so and, much I mean, easier. and you you pointed out i mean i think the number one use case that we saw evolve inside of gemini workspace was summarizing and first mm -hmm. of all workspace is great for building content the problem is too much and so um i agree with you that that use case is persistent everywhere which is a perfect segue for this demo. So this demo was actually built by uh, Justin on our team. And Justin, oh, by the way, the last one was built by Donato Melli, who uh, is uh, at the moment, happily uh, waiting child number two to show up. So go team Donato. Um, <laughs> <Donato. laughs> um, this one's super neat because of the, again, the use case is just so brilliantly obvious. So Justin came up with an idea of taming the team stand-up report inside a chat. So for example, you know, folks want to come out and contribute a, you know, uh, what they've worked on this week. So if you're familiar with the stand-up process, everybody tells what they did. And in this case, you'll notice um, every Tuesday, in our case, the way we run it, we have a weekly trigger that simply lets you know, everybody, to put your items that you worked on. So super cool. By the way, I have a button automating all this on another screen if you're wondering how these are popping in like this. And so uh, folks come along and they send their updates. So you'll notice 
people start working and people start looking at updates. I'm gonna actually expand that. And you'll notice Wes and pierre and uh, a bunch of folks are putting it and some folks like to put a lot. <laughs> so as a manager or as a team member even, this is awesome, but you may not wanna see these all, right? Or you may not wanna actually br browse through them all. So once folks are done doing this, we actually use a trigger. In this case, we're using a timer trigger. We actually run it every hour. It simply takes all those threads that belong to that parent level thread, takes the entire payload, and you can see there Wes and Pierre and Ken, takes everything associated to each one of those individuals, summarizes it into one line, and rewrites it back into the chat thread. So now, instead of looking at all this, right, I can just look at this. So I can literally shut this window. And then when the week comes along, and people are using this site, and they're talking about things that are working and things that are fixing or giving all kinds of stuff. Hey, there's a good one from me. Um, this is neat because now, as it piles through and all this stuff happens, what you can do is, again, when that Next week comes along, and that trigger, again, just an app script trigger comes along, and then folks come in and start to send more updates. Same thing works, comes out. Folks come in, they apply their updates. Uh, the neat thing, again, everything just works. It makes it simple. But my favorite thing here, the summary is great, but because you're using the chat API, right? Let me make, sure, make that summarize run for a second. Again, without even opening it, I'll get a summary here in a second. And to your point about the summary, Charles, you know what you're doing is actually it's it's running on that hour timer, but it's only providing a summary to that latest check-in. So you're not resummarizing every single thing every yeah. hour. It's only looking at the latest, uh, the latest set of updates, and then summarizing yeah. that and not running again. That's a great point. And again, if your use case is really compelling and needs to be on the activity. We just recently released uh, an event API in chat. So you can even be a little more ambitious with this. But this use case, again, super, super easy, super, super well, super, super logical. And I didn't need to write a lot. Figures, as you know, are awesome for set and forget and, and make it go. So my favorite feature, again, you get all these things in, you get the summary. But we simply, each time we build out a new one going forward, we capture the last thread. So you can move through all the threads and you can look at this week and last week and the week before, the week before that, and the week before that. And it's just a great little productivity tool to tame the chat inside a chat. Cool. There was, actually, there was a, another great um, chat example at Next, so yeah. which is in the documentation. So we shared it on Pulse recently, which basically turns a chat space into a knowledge base. Um, yeah. So. We've had we've had that team on before and yeah. talked about their 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 demos. They're they're definitely a different level of demo. So you, you're gonna have to yeah. invest a bit of time in that. But I think the the result is amazing in terms of and as a starting point to do more within your business. Um I think it's a great example that you can go away and start doing today. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, a while ago if you if you evaluated the chat API when it first introduced at the very beginning. A lot of folks kind of you know, looked at it, kicked the tires, and, and kind of ran away. There's been so much investment lately that the solutions that you can do, whether it's you know, you know, fronting it with dialogue flow or just the ability to actually manage threads and expand people, yeah, there's a very good prompt. Mm -hmm. uh, capture that screenshot that pull down that. That's a great, that's a great resource. All right, one last one. And this came from the mind of Kara. So Kara, why don't you actually let us know? What this thing's all about. Sure, yeah. So the last one we have is an implementation of a link preview. And this is a newer way to extend the UI, uh, doing so through a Google Workspace add-on, but the interface is actually within the document instead of the sidebar. So I know you hate when I pull that up, but I, <laughs> I just you don't need you don't need it as a user, but this is just, I don't mean this to be funny, it's just an add-on. Right, so this is just a workspace add-on with some some slight change. Yeah, yeah, and that and that homepage is actually auto-generated by Google. So when you're building one of these, you really only have to worry about the design of the link preview itself because that is the main interaction point for the user. 
What we've done here is we've added link previews for the Google Workspace developer documentation. And when you hover over the chip that the URL turns into, we provide the title of the page and then a AI generated summary of the page. Now, as we mentioned, sometimes you might have unexpected results from the AI model. And so we also added some interactivity where the user can say, ooh, this was not a great summary. And then when they do that, it prompts Gemini to give us a new summary. And now we can say, okay, this makes sense. Great, love it. And we can give it a good rating and we can capture that feedback to see how this link preview is performing. Now, one of the things we're doing here, which is important to save on our AI API calls is that we're caching these summaries when they come through. And we're actually using Firestore to do that. And we're also using a GitHub library for Firestore that I highly recommend. It's one of our, you know, if you've seen our tips and tricks, we recommend using libraries. It sometimes, you know, will slow down your, execu your execution. So you want to be careful about that. But in this scenario, it really helped us create um, these Firestore entries a lot more easily than I otherwise would have been able to do it. So, um, oh, we're in the code already. Great. Oh, so I've been following the code along as you've been talking. <laughs> oh, <okay>. Fabulous. <laughs> so yeah, you can see how here how easy it is to create these functions that we need. And I really just need to create, update, query, and delete. Because what we're doing, if you go into the main file, is once we get that URL, we're checking first to see if this page is one that has already been given a down vote that the summary existed, but it was bad and we need to regenerate it again. So when we do that, we look for that summary in Firestore, we delete it so that we can then uh, query uh, the, the URL again in Firestore and we see that it doesn't exist and any new ones that haven't existed yet will also go through this process. We will generate the summary and then save it as a new store um, in Firestore. Talk, talk about your prompt here. I will. So <laughs> I was looking at it because I love you use the persona. I'd love to know more how you felt that one. Yeah. So, you know, if if you are looking at the prompt guide or any other prompt resources, you do want to give some context to Gemini so that they know, you know, the style, the voice, the the way to think about your result. <laughs> and so we wanted to make sure that they knew that they were a documentation expert. Um, we wanted to give them some clear guidelines on how much content to give back. And so to, you know, to your point about showing in, in the previous demo where we showed the given prompt and the custom prompt where they were, you know, give this to me in, in the aspect of tech writer, you can really see the difference when you provide a persona or some sort of background setting for the model and how different the, the outcome can be. Um, so yeah, so we gave it some, some boundaries of like two to three sentences, short description. And this was, you know, an iteration of, of a previous prompt that was much shorter. You know, at first I just started with, hey, give me a summary of this. And it was fine, but I wanted to keep making it better. So I added the persona, I added the guidelines, I added things like, um, you know, make sure you use the most recent product names for us because it, it's been trained on so much data that sometimes a G Suite would pop in here and there. So. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen that. Did you use any tools in your prompt design? Did you do it natively here, trial and error? Like, what was your your process? Yeah, for this one, I did actually use uh, Vertex AI Studio, um, and this was something that Martin Martin mentioned earlier. It's very similar to uh, Google AI Studio. It just is. It, it's in. It's within the cloud console, and you know, I was working with the temperature, working with all those settings that you can play with along with the actual um, prompt itself. And the interesting thing was, you know, the amount of HTML I was sending it really affected the output. So when we get the HTML of this page using URL fetch, I then chunk it to just the portion of the HTML that has the content of the page. And that really improved the quality of the summary I was getting back. Yeah, that's a good point when you bring up chunking, right? I mean, you know, sometimes you can actually send and send and send to get or break down the prompts to smaller nuggets to refine them and then resend them to get a better output. You don't have to expect to get it all at one time. So that's a great point. All right, where's the where's the where's the money here? 
go over to let's go over to the Vertex store. Do you want you want to show how similar it is, or talk about the differences as well between the, the, the first time you showed and this one? Is there anything you did dramatically differently? You mentioned you went to Vertex this time. Absolutely. So for this one, we are using Vertex, but you'll see it looks incredibly similar to what we first showed you in the custom function code sample. Um, a few differences is, you know, obviously the URL fetch call is a different call to a different API, but it's still your standard URL fetch with all of your options included, your API information. And it's interesting what I noticed with this, the, the response we got back in the payload is it was it was chunked out into parts. So instead of just grabbing that text, we actually had to grab each part of the text and then string that together. So that was an interesting caveat to using Vertex AI. And Martin, I don't know if you've, you've come across this as well, if you've used both um, when you're using mm -hmm. this. But that was one thing I noticed that was like, oh, I have to make sure that I loop through Vertex's response versus what I'm getting from Generum Language API. Well, as I've got the library, <laughs> I've been oh, I've been through that pain. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What a perfect yeah. segue. <laughs> yeah. It is a good segue. One 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 final point I got highlighted here. We learned an odd lesson. Um and again, it's just something to be aware of. I got this a lot. So I live in the West Coast, US, and I was using, I figured, you know, US West region because it was close. And I uh, I think it was the it was the Gmail one. I kept getting, you're out of quota, you're out of quota, you're out of quota. I was like, huh? Mm -hmm. What do we learn about picking a data region? <laughs> yeah, so we went into cloud and we looked at our quotas and we learned that quotas are currently dependent on the region that you're using with the AI APIs. And if you are not using, so central is, the best one to use because it has currently the highest quotas. Um, but if you're using something like West, when you think you might be able to get, what was it, 300 or 100 calls? 100, I was getting killed. Yeah. I couldn't, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, so I would be very careful about, um, you know, if, if you're not using that many or you're not, you know, testing it in the way that we were that heavily, West or some other region might be fine for you, but if you are anticipating mm -hmm. more calls, Central is currently the best one. But that's subject to change, of course. Yeah. <laughs> have to learn it. Hey, one final thought, then we'll, we'll switch it over to, to to Martin. I just want to share this one. So the name of your intelligence one, yeah, the the undocumented uh, document one, just to tell you the difference in a in a prompt that can be simple, but but again, very to the point. You know, remember we wanted three different names. That was the number we came up with for the user. We also wanted a summary again so they could read it. And you can see here we put those tasks back to back. Right? Your task is to create three potential documents, document names for this content. So obviously you're going to read that and come back with a name. Also create a summary so the user can read that. Don't include format. Just give us a nice, clean two to three sentence summary. Very important to be explicit. I need a paragraph. I need two or three sentences. Remember, when you're in an add-on, you have a limited size. So you don't want to get too big or you don't want to overwhelm the user unless it's absolutely necessary. Tell it. I need one sentence. I need, I need whatever. I need three bullets, whatever you want to do. Uh, the, the next part, again, was was really, the to me, one of the more important parts. One of the things I found about building these, I would often figure out what I wanted to work backwards from. So how do I want to receive it as a developer? So as a developer, I wanted a JSON object I could parse that would be, de be dependable. So in this case, I said, give me a JSON object. I want the first field called names, must be called names. The second field must be called summary. I was explicit and I got it back. Once I get that, and again, so I'm not subject to running a lot of calls back to my, um, my Gemini model, I, as, a, as I'm debugging this, I simply get the response I need. I stop calling that, I segment that off and I unit test right around everything else. That's not the Gemini call, make it a little bit faster and obviously not to run the meter on any of these calls. Remember when you're doing this, there's a cost to running most of these models. Those costs will change, they'll vary. You want to actually be prepared for that cost. Um, obviously in usage, perhaps even in development. We ran these putting together and we assembled these seven scenarios and we ran these and ran these and ran these. And the, the number I looked at came across was about four cents or uh, $0.04. Dollars. 
And for that, it was over a period of a, a good solid week. So it wasn't like we were breaking the bank with it. Your miles going to vary. Everything's going to change. But you want to be mindful of it because this is beyond the out of the box. And obviously, you're going to incur some of these things. Processing time is huge on this. And so obviously, that there, there's, a, there's, a, there's an expense to that. There's a value to that. As an app developer, you want to make sure, again, if you're running a gazillion custom functions in a spreadsheet, not only is it going to be slow, but the meter will be run. With that, we showed you URL fetch. We showed how to do it the, let's call it the old fashioned way. <laughs> um, Martin said, let me wrap all this up. Let me do it in a new way. And let me do it with something way more cooler. Martin took an old problem, which is making mail merges uh, fun again, and lit it up. Martin, you want to show? Yeah. Me? So I've got a bit of a history in mail merges. Um, so let me put this back. Um, so uh, yeah, um, as I joked at next, one of the documentation pages is a mail merge I wrote a couple of years ago. And if I had a dollar for every page view. Um, anyway, so this is version three of the mail merge. Um, so this is still using Gemini, um, but there's, as uh, Charles and Cara touched upon, Gemini is multimodal. So you, you, know, you can put images in it, but it's got other capabilities. And this solution is just gonna highlight that. So here we've got a Google Sheet, pretty standard in terms of mail merge kind of data fields. You know, you've got your headings, um, you know, information in that. I'm just going to skip over to the code. So the code's going to look a, a little different, other than it being on a black screen. Um, dark mode, Martin. Dark mode. Um, so we're doing something slightly different here. So this is pretty. This is pretty much all the code. So it's 45 lines of code. You'll see there's a lot of text. So we're doing a lot of prompt engineering as part of this. But the key thing is this final prompt. So this is the prompt that we give um, in this function. And it, it it does everything else for us. So there's a bit of setup before that. And let me just explain what, what's going on here. So in terms of um, the Gemini API, there's a magic feature called function calling that you can use. Function calling. Um, I think it has the ability to give us superpowers, particularly in the context of AppScript. So AppScript, generally it runs on behalf of the user. So you can write some code and it can create a document for them, it can gen generate draft emails for them. With uh, function calling within Gemini, you're e essentially exposing the functions that in your AppScript project in a way to Gemini so that it understands your function. So it understands what that function does, what that what parameters that function needs to run. Gemini isn't actually running that function. So you that's the headline here. You're you're still running these functions locally. So just to quickly talk you through this script. So we have Gemini app, and I'll get back to that in a second, but similar sort of thing. We're declaring our model, but this is where it gets interesting. We're declaring functions for our model. So I've got this function called get contact lists. I've got this function called draft messages, which are actually in the script project. So here's get contact lists. Here's draft messages. So again, just to iterate, we're not sending the code. We're just sending kind of the JSON docs description of those functions into Gemini. And this is temporary. We're not, we're still at the same price point Charles was talking about in terms of pay for, for what you use when you use it. We're not doing any training or any more advanced things that you can do with Gemini. So in terms of cost effectiveness, I think this is a, a really effective way to, to do stuff. So car functions, and then I start my chat and I add my functions to my chat and I've got my message or my prompt. And then I hit the run button. <laughs> Any questions before I hit the run button and do a secret dance? <laughs> hit it, hit it. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to hit something just to call out. So just to show that these functions are running locally, I've got the only um, logging I'm doing is actually in the local functions. So let's give this a whirl. So this is firing up. So what it's actually doing. Oh, we're oh boy. Demo gods. I'm going to give it another go. So this is where you should spend more time engineering your prompts to make sure they work. I already worked the second oh, time. Going somewhere. Um, so I'm going to still let this run. And it's actually a good 
call out in terms of what this library is doing. So all we're doing is sending our data. Um, so we're making that call. We, we've got that prompt that says get my contact list. Gemini decides it wants to run that get contact list function. We push that data back into Gemini in a very kind of raw, here's the 2D array, deal with it. <laughs> and then it's able to interpret that data and decide, actually, oh, I've got this draft message function I can call. So let's call it. So it's done that three different times. So in my draft emails, if I would just quickly refresh, we've got these three completely different draft emails, all generated by Gemini. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think this is really, in terms of capabilities and opportunities, you know, we've done something here with, uh, you know, using uh, Sheets and uh, Gmail, but think of other situations like chat, where you can expose abilities to your um, chat solution, your chat app, use Gemini to interpret the intent and entities out of that conversation with the user. And I don't know, run functions like create calendar events or anything else that you've, you want to hook into. Um, so I think there's a lot there's obviously, you know, this is cutting edge stuff. Yeah. Spend time yeah. understanding it. Um, as I mentioned, behind the scenes of this, there's like tons of JSON payload flying around. So, but in this project, you can see, you know, there's very little code that we're actually doing. And that's thanks to this um, library that uh, I put together. So it's actually a it's drawing on different community contributions, and I'm just putting it into a, a Google Apps Script wrapper. So this library not only just does function calling. So if you any of the examples you, you've you've seen as part of the show, you can do something similar. So there's uh, instructions to set this up. Uh, another thing, just to quickly say, is this library. You can start your project in Google AI Studio with an API key. If you want to swap that out into using Vertex AI, you just change your configuration. You're not changing a single line of additional code. It will still work absolutely fine. So if you were wanting to do something like um, the, the custom function, here's, here's an example of how you just set that up. So you're declaring your model. In this case, we're using Gemini Pro. You can be very specific. If you go into the API documentation, you can see various versions, Gemini 1.0, Gemini 1.5, it just went public preview. So you can specify which model you want to use. We have our prompt. We can, um, as kind of similar to the API endpoint um, Carl was talking about, we can generate content and we get a response. So another nice thing that this library does is instead of you having to navigate around lots of JSON payloads to get the response, you can just say, dot text oh, beautiful <laughs> and job's done <laughs> if you want to do images there's an example there you can throw images into this and get responses um so again get the text back and you can do chats and that, this is where i think again it gets interesting that you can um you know if you you're storing a chat history somewhere else like firestore you, you can pull that back in um and just put that using this library quite easily, put that back in and continue the conversation. So um, I think this was a multi turn. Anyway, the documentation's there. Have fun. Tell me what you go and do with it. If you have any issues, just track, log them in GitHub. I'll get them sorted as quick as I can. Features you want, same, just log them. If you want to contribute, please do. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Two questions. Who's who's uh, any names you can shout out? Who's who's been helping you with this community? Or so, uh, someone who's uh, not too unfamiliar f to us is uh, Mr. Mr. Roman. Oh, hello. <laughs> so from the script script at IT. So um, uh, originally he did this solution for Chat GBT. Boo. Um, but it was so <laughs> awesome. Not us. <laughs> <laughs> it was so awesome that as, as soon as I saw this come land for Gemini, I, I was like, Let, I'm going to rewrite this library. 
there's a lot of the Google JavaScript SDK. So if you don't want to do this in um, app script, if you've got other programming languages, you know, you can use alternative runtimes, obviously, and workspace add-ons. Google have a ton of libraries. And basically, the, the, this Gemini app library um, uses the same, you know, you can go in and look at the JavaScript um, SDK documentation. And these are the exact same examples. I've basically made sure that this library, you can take something from uh, JavaScript web as a code sample and use it here. We're not changing a line of code other than I, I think you go Gemini app. That's the only difference. Great. Any thoughts on where it goes next or where you want it to go next or? Well, Gemini 1.5, they're still adding stuff. They're still adding features. So the ability, you know, with 1.5, you've got this huge token context window, million tokens. Um, the ability to upload files first um, before you start doing your questioning is a, a slightly different process. So that's something I would like to add to the library. Um, so, I, and that's, you know, one of the thing, challenges is just keeping up with some of the features yeah. that are coming through. I noticed today that there's a Gemini experimental within Vertex AI on the on the cloud project. So I've been playing around that, with that today. Um, so, uh, but as I said, any people got particular features uh, they they want in this library, uh, they're they're welcome to put a request in or fork it and just do it yourself. Put me out of the picture. I don't care. And fingers crossed one day it'll be a built-in advanced service, but oops. Uh, <laughs> it could happen. Hey, so I, first of all, I want to thank anybody who watched this whole time or watched the whole thing. God bless you and thank you. Uh, the crew, I mean, that was a lot of air. That made an hour and a half, by the way, longest TU show ever, at least in my, in my turn um, in recent years. And I don't feel like it was that long, but it was. I, <laughs> Content. <laughs> I, I, I think the neatest thing is you saw what we're just beginning to figure out and coming across. It'll be interesting to see where it evolves. It'll be interesting how it all evolves. I was pleasantly oversurprised about the reaction we got. A lot of people are like, I mean, you know, Everybody was, you know, from nervously excited to, wow, I can't wait to do it, to I know what I'm doing this weekend, and some of the feedback we got from the original. So that is awesome. Like I said, it's almost like a magic sauce that we didn't see coming. You know, AppScript's always been AppScript, but you add this little sprinkling of magic dust that makes it easy to take all the stuff you've got in it and do cooler things with it and things that we've always dreamed of. That's what we're And so I, this is, in a lot of ways, almost like rebooting the potential of AppScript, I think. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, like you said, alternate runtimes as well too. So, so I'm going to pause. We yeah, should. Uh, we say, should yeah. or, well, I'm really excited to see the Workspace Developer Summits coming back, Boston. And oh, Berlin. yeah. I, I, I don't have the those screens up. Uh, in September, we'll be in Boston. We'll be in Berlin. Um, we'll put something in the show notes so people can register interest. But, we'll be uh, in IO extended in Berlin. We'll be in IO proper up in um, Shoreline in, um, in about a month, actually like a month this week. Um, and you know the neat thing is we're getting invited to the parties as, as workspace developers where that wasn't always the case. So folks that come tuned in, you know, thanks to folks from Stiegel and Uger and Brett and everybody else. Appreciate it to the crew. Alice, Kara, thank you. Martin, take us out. Happy scripting. Bye.